What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I'm finally bringing you the video that I promised quite a while ago about a female friend of mine who uh, I lift with in the gym occasionally and she decided to do her own like do-it-yourself hormone replacement therapy. So uh, I'm going to go over briefly her test results to show you what happened to her when she attempted this on her own. Uh, I'm not going to give you too many details about her. She's in her 30s. Uh, she's been lifting, you know, a lot, I guess. And I think she's trying to do bikini at some point. And so uh, before jumping into like bigger things, she decided to just try to optimize her hormones. And so she went to her doctor and got a full metabolic panel, hormone panel, you know, a complete workup to see where she was at to see if maybe, you know, she's on the low end, it's getting later in life, you got menopause coming. And so she went to get a, a you know a basic a basic panel done to find out where she was at to see if maybe there was some leeway to add some exogenous testosterone and maybe get you know some better libido some better energy in the gym recovery muscle building you know all the things that you would expect in testosterone so um, for starters let's just go with that that basic initial uh, blood work uh, I'm going to put all this up on the screen. She had uh, the complete metabol uh, comprehensive metabolic panel. Everything's normal. There's nothing really to, to talk about here. You know, just everything was perfectly in the range. Um, IGF-1, let's start there. IGF-1, uh, LCMS sensitive test, came back at 130 in a range of 53 to 331. Her estradiol on a sensitive test came back at 81 picograms per milliliter. Uh, there's various ranges depending on the... Uh, the phase of your cycle. I believe she said follicular, I'm not positive. Uh, follicular phase is 39 to 375. So her estrogen would be kind of on the low end of normal, I guess. I, I, I'm not really versed at looking at female blood work. Um, so then her testosterone, her free testosterone, again, these are all sensitive LCMS tests. Her free testosterone came back, excuse me, her total testosterone came back at 22 in a range of 2 to 45, so sort of middle of the range. Um, her free testosterone was 2.1 in a range of 0.1 to 6.4 picograms per milliliter. So, I mean, she's not at the top of the range. Um, I'm sure most females probably aren't. And so she did some research. She asked me to do some research. Uh, just for clarification, I'm not advising anyone try this and you're going to see why very soon. I'm not a doctor. I'm not really technically legally her coach. Like I, I'm not advising anyone, but we did do some research together to try to find out you know, what's available to a woman. It's a lot harder for a woman to get on hormone replacement therapy than a man, especially if she's not postmenopausal. Um, so we came across or she came across a video that I believe was on Jay Cutler TV. I'll look it up and link it below. It was uh, Dr. Rand who was doing a question and answer session and a female wrote in and said, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a bikini competitor. I'd like to optimize my hormones. Um, what testosterone dose would you recommend? And he said that he would recommend 20 milligrams of testosterone cypionate per week, which would put a female in the quote unquote uh, sweet spot. And that he warns in the video that if you do this, you will have a really a relative very high total testosterone for a portion of the week. His numbers given in that video are that that her she would expect her testosterone level to peak up at about 250 nanograms per deciliter, uh, and then taper off as the drug r r runs out of the system, and that that was required to get to the female sweet spot, and that that should give her a, a seven picograms per milliliter free testosterone level. So there was no talk of masculinizing effects at that dose, that that was, you know, what a woman could use to stay a woman and optimize her hormones for all of the reasons that you would want to optimize your hormones. So that's what my friend decided to do. 20 milligrams of test C per week and uh, see what would happen. So. She started injecting the test. Um, she was using uh, an insulin pen that's got like a, a line for each point. So there's 100, 100 units in the pen, which is 100 units for one milliliter. So some quick math. 
300, she had 300 milligram per milliliter testosterone bottles is what she got, where she got it, uh, it's not really relevant. But, um, so, admittedly it was, it was not from a doctor. So there is the factor that she did source it from an underground laboratory. Um, we researched the laboratory extensively, as, as much as you can extend, you know, you can research something like that. Uh, it's a well-known laboratory, I'm not going to tell you who it is, uh, you, you know, but they, they, their products have been tested a number of times and they always come back, come back very good. Um, admittedly, some of their products have tested a little high, so 300 milligram test C may come back at 313 milligrams. Not lower and not like crazy high, it's not like 500. So again, before I read you these test results, we cannot definitively prove the, the strength of the bottle that she was using. So six weeks in, she'd had some significant side effects, and so she decided to get her blood work done again to find out where her hormones were at at that six week period. To give you an idea of the side effects, uh, she had experienced some uh, uh, more body hair growth, like not necessarily more hair. She just said that the, the hairs that she already had, like she was shaving more frequently. And that there was a couple of new hairs, like sprout on her chin, she felt like. Uh, nothing like that continued to get worse. It was like a small thing. And uh, a little bit of sensitivity downstairs. Um, but then as the weeks were on, she had a couple of <laughs> sort of what you might call roid rage experience, experiences. Uh, with some pretty, pretty marked heightened aggression and just very atypical behavior for how she felt like she's ever been. So um, she advised me what she was going to do before she did it. We talked about it a lot. I shared my experiences. I shared stuff that I found on, on various things online, like uh, I'm always watching more plates, more dates video content. One of the things we were really uncertain about and basically just decided to trial it was what was gonna to happen to her estrogen. Derek in his video on, I think it's safest female steroids, again, I'll link that below. He talked about nandrolone as being a effectively bioidentical hormone for female and that it would likely shut down her estrogen production and that she might need to take exogenous estrogen. Uh, she was not terribly worried about that, but that's which is why we, we got her, uh, her estrogen check to see what would happen. I didn't really follow along with Derek's, with Derek's thought process there because it's not how I understand the hypothalamic pituitary axis to, to behave, right? So if a man injects testosterone, he's got exogenous hormones in his bloodstream and the body sees that and says, we've got too much, we don't need any make any more, shuts off his testicles, he stops making his own testosterone. That's basically how the, 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 the negative feedback loop is created and the, the hypothalamic pituitary axis shuts down natural hormone production. But that's from an excessive amount of testosterone. So I didn't understand why injecting testosterone would make her body stop making estrogen. It seems to me that in order to shut down her estrogen production, you would need to impart more estrogen. So again, uh, I don't know, you know, Derek seemed to be uncertain of that. And so for the community at large, if anybody who's wondering, some of this data will elucidate that a little bit. So at the six, six week period, after some experiences that we both felt were a little bit suspicious, she went and got her blood work done. And really, really we were trusting Dr. Rand. Like I, I thought that she'd come back at a 250 or less and it would be all good. And when she called to tell me what her testosterone result was, I, <laughs> I, didn't, I, mean, I didn't believe it. I, I thought for sure that her specimens got mixed up, that something was wrong. Uh, the lab came back with a total testosterone of 650 nanograms per deciliter in a range of 2 to 45 for a woman. So we're talking about full-blown male testosterone, I mean, not even fucking close. Like, lots of, you could be a teenage boy and not have testosterone that high. I mean, I, my, my natural testosterone has been below 650 since I was like 35 years old. So, you know, I was making reasonable gains in the gym on those, that volume and having no problem with aggression. So it's, you know, hard to believe really. So her free was 119.9 in a range of 0.1 to 6.4. So we're talking about 
orders of magnitude greater than the top end of the range for a woman, which is very scary, very startling. Put everything into perspective why she was having the changes that she was having. And honestly, it seemed to freak me out more than it freaked her out. Like, I'm like, shut it down, stop, you know, pull the plug, abort mission immediately. This is fucking bad. I was shocked that her voice hadn't changed. I was shocked that that really, you know, what she experienced was, was the, the sum total of it. Now, admittedly, we're talking about still a relatively short period of exposure, right? So six weeks is nothing. But the thing that was so bizarre is that when we did follow-up research, we found that the doses that doctors prescribe to, to uh, females who are trying to become men, transgender, female, male, I don't know, a, 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 girl, a girl who's trying to become a man is put on a starter dose of 50 milligrams of testosterone a week, which usually goes up to 100 or greater, to, uh, to facilitate you know, voice changing and all of the things that she's looking for to become a man. So 20 milligrams, obviously less than half what would be required to become a man, and yet she had testosterone levels very, very consistent with being a man. So I told her, there's no way this is true. Call the lab, verify this result. There's no way. She did. The lab verified that they ran it twice, in fact, when they saw it because they didn't believe it. And so, so there you are. Uh, I, we still to this day do not know how this happened. She was taking, again, uh, quick math, 3,000 3, um, uh, milligrams per milliliter times 0 0.07 gives you 21 milligrams. She was pulling down to seven lines, you know, not, not 0 0.7, 0 0.07, less than, less than 0 0.1 on that little insulin pen. And somehow I have a 650. So, um, you know, we re-watched Rand's videos, we watched everything, just no, no ability to figure out why this is. So she stopped, she skipped her next injection and went and tested again. And I can't remember the number, it obviously had started to fall, it was in the like 400s. And so we talked again and I said, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, how do you feel, what are you gonna do? And so she said she was going to give it another week and see what happened. I won't bore you with all the details, but eventually she decided that she did not want to stop completely, that she enjoyed <laughs> the effects that she got, obviously. She's fucking setting PRs in the gym left and right, super horny, like all of the things that you would expect from, you know, massive testosterone dose, and she didn't want to give it all up. And so she decided that she was going to cut the dose in half to see if she could get her levels back closer to what Dr. Rand had recommended. Now at this point, we're kind of running out of faith in Dr. Rand. And don't, don't misunderstand, this is not an attack on him or, or anybody, I, I think this is a fluke. I don't, I don't know what caused it, but it's what happened. So I, I forget how long it took, let's see. The result, the second result was, was, was done in, uh, where am I at? I guess she waited another six weeks. So at the net, she, she pinned 0 0.03, which I rem remember correctly is like uh, seven milligrams, six milligrams of, of testosterone. It's like, you know, nothing. And um, I was telling her like, I mean, I don't know how that can do anything. I mean, it's just a tiny little drop. And so she retested again. This time she did a full, uh, another full panel. And so this, these are the results. Um, Metabolic panel, totally normal. Her total testosterone on what's effectively seven milligrams per week of testosterone came back at 310 nanograms per deciliter in a two to 45 range. So still crazy high. Still above where Dr. Rand had recommended that 250 would be the peak. Um, so, you know, she's well above that. Her free testosterone was 46.4 in a range of 0.1 to 6.4 picograms per milliliter. So again, nowhere near seven that he's talking about. I don't know how the hell he, how you get 250 nanograms per deciliter total and seven picograms per milliliter free. Like, I, I don't know how you get there. Her numbers certainly never did. Her IGF-1 went from 130 to 220. Her estrogen 
went from 81 to 142 which is perfectly consistent with what I would have expected to happen and why I disagreed with Derek's video. So she's got a, a significantly higher amount of exogenous testosterone that's going to undergo aromatase, uh, it's going to aromatize into more estrogen. So you'd expect that her 81 would go up and in fact it did. So the testosterone definitely does not shut down a woman. Now whether nandrolone acts through some other pathway that would shut down um, natural estrogen, I don't know, maybe Derek will pick this up and make a video explaining how he thinks that occurs, but certainly uh, exogenous testosterone does not do that. So um, lipid panel was good, Every, everything else was good, um, but still very high testosterone. She experienced no further uh, masculinizing effects. Um, she said that, you know, she missed the higher dose that the libido was much better on the higher dose. Obviously the strength was better, everything was better on the higher dose, but I mean, you know, I mean, let's be honest, to, to maintain a 650 nanogram per deciliter testosterone level as a woman seems pretty insane unless you're actively trying to make a change. So I don't know what happened. I would love for someone, anyone who has a, a better understanding of these things to please in the comment section below, response videos, whatever. I mean, what the fuck happened here? And to anyone who's thinking about doing this, if you're a female and you're thinking about trying to modify your own hormones, please be very, very careful what you do, what you listen to. If you take anything at all, be certain that you get blood work because you just never know what's going to happen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Looks like my battery's about to die. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.